Hey besties and thank you so much for joining me in today's video. In today's video we are talking about my perfumes I picked up in October and how I'm feeling about them, my thoughts, opinions, and recaps. I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you've also been picking up new fragrances, comment down below your current favorites. If you're interested in my makeup or the fragrances in this video, I will link that all down below. I'm gonna try to drink some of this tea first because y'all, my throat for the past few weeks has been so rusty, so raspy. I've been trying everything and honestly I'm just going to make an appointment because it's feeling so coarse and it shouldn't be like this. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the change in the weather but please bear with me on my voice. I'm trying my best and Honestly, sometimes talking in the video is like it literally has been hurting, so please bear with me if my voice has been sounding a little off. Starting out with the fragrance, I did go ahead and return, which was Prada Paradox Intense. Now listen, in the opening, in my opinion, it smelled so similar to the original, but just a little bit sweeter in the base with the extra vanilla almost came off kind of like syrupy, which I did love. It was definitely more amber, which was nice. You got the florals. No tangerine note, unfortunately, but I still felt like it opened up very beautiful, bright, and kind of citrusy, which was great. I believe that fragrance still has bergamot. But on the dry down, just with the added moss note and then also the odd synthetic notes, it wasn't playing well with my body chemistry. In fact, someone literally told me I smelled like an ashtray. And after the fragrance dried down, I did believe them. Like it was very, very synthetic smelling, very um, smoky in the dry down. And in my opinion, it just was not my favorite. If those notes do warm up on your skin very well, I'm sure that fragrance would be beautiful on you. It's definitely more refined and a bit more mature than the original so I did like it. It just wasn't a favorite and I didn't want to fake it and you guys know what? After returning it I don't feel FOMO, no regret. I just feel happy and content with my collection so as much as I did want to like keep it and I did feel bad returning it I'm so happy that I did because I feel like I just would have got stuck with something I truly don't love. So that's my take on Prada Paradox Intense. It's pretty but it's not for me. And for anybody curious it had top notes of pear, neroli, and bergamot, middle notes of moss, neroli, essence, and jasmine, and base notes of bourbon vanilla, vanilla, amber fix, amber, and serenalide. Now on to better things, our moths Club de Nuit Imperial. This if you want to smell like Delina Exclusive but for a fraction of the price, this is, I would say, like 90%, if not more, similar. The bottle's beautiful, so it's not like they cheaped out with packaging. This is so stunning, and I feel like if you're someone that truly has been wanting this fragrance, but you really want to save up, wait a little bit longer, but you want something so super similar, or maybe you don't even care about having the original, and you just want to have something that smells super close, this is immaculate. I think it was 40 or $50 on Amazon. And am I going to go back? Am I going to repurchase my Delina Exclusive when I do run out? Or will I keep this? I don't know. I really feel like they smell similar, but there's something about this one that comes off a little more feminine and a little smoother and more put together, I will say. And this fragrance, you get like the same vibe, the vanilla, the woods, the rose, but there's also something in this fragrance. I think you're getting more of that incense note, so it's a little more smoky. And in the opening, it's more fresh, spicy, so really pretty. These are such minimal differences I'm naming, and this is intense. The projection and performance on this perfume is insane, and when you do think about the price point, I mean, honestly, this is a no-brainer. At least try it out in your collection. This can be headache-inducing. It's so strong, so you only need a little bit. I'm just saying it as a warning. That way you don't go in over-spraying it and then completely, like, just have the worst headache of your life, like I did the first time I smelled it. Funny enough, that really doesn't happen with my Delina Exclusive, but just wanted to go ahead and mention that for you. That one has top notes of lychee, nutmeg, bergamot, middle notes of Turkish rose, vanilla, musk, and peony, and base notes of vanilla, cashmere, incense, and cedar. And Club de Nuit is definitely for the woman that wants to make a long-lasting impression, that wants to smell bold, sexy, 
beautiful, all the great things. And devotion is going to be more for those of you that really want to smell quite delicious and gourmand. You want to smell sweet. You want to smell um, very, very indulgent. This is the fragrance for you. This one is citrus vanilla. A little bit of orange blossom to add some freshness to a very sweet and sugary fragrance. So if this is you, I think you'd love it. I really, really do get the, I think it's called like panna cotta. It's this creamy Italian dessert. I do get that in the fragrance. There is a note of rum. If anything, maybe it's adding a little bit of warmth, but I really don't pick up on any boozy qualities in this fragrance. I don't find it to be incredibly sexy. I more so find it to be very beautiful for every day. If you do love lemony citrus fragrances like this one, super, super good. Definitely giving lemon meringue and I am definitely here for it. So if you do love lemon citruses, once again, it's at least worth a sniff. And if you do pick this up, do yourself a favor and check out the deals on Joma Shop. They do not disappoint ever. Top note of candied lemon, middle notes of orange blossom, panna cotta, and rum, and a base note of vanilla. And some people do say this smells like cleaning products. I think someone just said it smells like pledge and I do not get that, especially on the dry down when the creamy vanilla comes through. It's just a really nice time. I do not get pledge. I also recently picked up two fragrances from House of Siage on a sale. And can we just have a moment for the beautiful packaging? These are so, so pretty. Starting with Passion de l'Amour. This, when I smell it, I really do think of a woman who is very expensive, number one, because there is oud in here. And that note, in my opinion, I just do relate to smelling expensive and having a lot of depth. It's also very mysterious. You can't quite put your finger on this woman like there's something you can't figure out. She keeps you guessing, she's seductive, and honestly, drop dead gorgeous, I feel like. This smells so good, and I love wearing it. I've only wore it like three times, but the three times I did wear this, let me just say, I definitely felt like somebody. Really beautiful. You do get the oud. You get this really pretty, sweet, raspberry, kind of sticky candy-like. And you're also getting that patchouli, which I do enjoy patchouli and fragrances. I believe there's also vanilla at the base to this fragrance. So even though there's very, very, um, you know, challenging notes in the fragrance, I think on the dry down, when everything does settle... There is a nice sweetness about the fragrance that does keep it from being too, too earthy and just too strong for my liking. This one has way better projection and performance, in my opinion, than I would say Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff, in my opinion, is more of a really pretty, everyday, lightweight vanilla. It's like vanilla cream. It's vanilla cream, powdery, really creamy from that coconut... There's some citrus in this one as well. It's just a nice time, but the citrus is not to the extent of, say, devotion. It's much lighter, and it just adds to my liking of the fragrance. It's really, really nice. This is something I could easily wear every day and never get tired of. I love this fragrance, and I feel like if they have another sale, I'm going to get another one because this is so good. I could see myself using it up, like, so quickly. I wonder if they do refills. They definitely should. Oh, and the notes are top notes of raspberry, saffron, and bergamot, middle notes of raspberry, amorous, and lily of the valley, base notes of oud, vanilla, and patchouli, and also leatrice. I've never heard of that note before. Let me go ahead and click it. A sweet, floral, sultry, honey note. Ooh. So there's also saffron in Passion de l'Amour, which I do love. I think it just elevates the fragrance and makes it smell even more rich and luxurious. So that fragrance is going to make you smell expensive, but I would definitely not recommend blind buying it. Hufflepuff. I think a lot of us are going to love it regardless because it is very beautiful and vanilla. But Passion de l'Amour has a punch to it that I think not everybody is going to appreciate. And Hufflepuff has top notes of Italian lemon, coconut and peach, middle notes of gardenia, freesia, and jasmine sandback, and base notes of bourbon vanilla, vanilla bean, and Virginia cedar. I didn't know there was peach. Hold on. I do pick up on... The peach. This has to be one of my favorite perfumes 
that incorporates peach in the fragrance. Really, really, really pretty. Next up is YSL Black Opium Le Parfum. Thank you so, so much to the brand YSL Beauty for sending this over. I love it. I feel like it's one of the most smooth and creamy and beautiful vanillas I've ever put my nose on. You do still pick up on the florals, on the coffee very lightly. A little bit of cinnamon, but more than anything, in my opinion, on the dry down, it just becomes one of the most addictive vanilla fragrances in my whole entire collection. A beautiful fall fragrance, a beautiful year-round fragrance, definitely more refined and just so beautiful in comparison to the original. That one is more bold and in your face, and this one is really, really just so gorgeous on its own, mixed with other fragrances. In the opening, there is a brightness to it. You really get that peach note, or sorry, pear. But on the dry down, the way the vanilla is done in this fragrance is just immaculate. Top notes are pear, cinnamon, and green mandarin. Middle notes of solar notes jasmine sandback and orange blossom and base notes of madagascar vanilla bourbon vanilla vanilla absolute coffee vanilla orchid and patchouli and the patchouli in this fragrance i mean it does not bother me one bit if anything once again it's just making it smell more expensive and adding a little bit of a beautiful depth I'm having such a hard time picking the fragrances I want to talk about next. That in itself feels like such a to-do, but honestly, I'm just going to go with what's closest. You would think I'm picking between my 15 children right now. Like, that's how deep I'm making it. Cherry Ambition, The Seven Virtues. This is absolutely stunning, and I love it because I think it's versatile. So for me, it's cozy in a way. It's sultry. It's rich, bougie, and expensive. Any way that you want to dress this, I truly feel like you can dress it up, dress it down. It doesn't matter because it can be a really beautiful fall essential for every day. It can be a date night fragrance. It can be when you want to feel confident, you have a presentation. I think that's what they say this is great for. I could see all of that. This is so pretty. It does make a statement. I love, love, love the dark cherry in here. It's also kind of sour, especially in the opening. On the dry down, I do feel like you kind of lose it a little bit. I think cherry in general is one of those notes that can be fleeting. But oh, is it sexy. The powdery marshmallow in the fragrance keeps it from being too, too much for me. And I also really love the rich saffron that truly elevates this fragrance. You get the pink pepper that I love. You get, I think, the orris that I really enjoy in the fragrance. And the vanilla at the base keeps it from being too woodsy because at the dry down, you really do get that woodiness. And a touch of smoke. It's so, so gorgeous. And one of my favorite fall fragrances. Look at the dent, you guys. And it's just going to keep getting lower. It's so beautiful. I've also heard that cherry fragrances don't have the best projection and longevity. For me, I get moderate projection with six to seven hours. At that point, I do like to reapply, especially around like the five hour mark. Even though I can still smell it in my own personal bubble, I do like to go ahead and reapply sooner because I want every Body to smell this. It's also super duper complimented. Top notes of cherry, pink pepper, marshmallow, and mandarin orange. Middle notes of saffron, cherry blossom, orris, and osmanthus. And base notes of vanilla, frankincense, amber, musk, and gayak wood. Next is YSL Lieb Absolute Platine. This is a really beautiful perfume. I do have to say after having it for a good amount of time now, it's not something I'm gravitating towards as much as some of the other fragrances in this lineup, but it is really beautiful for a time and place. For me, it's very fresh and soapy and citrusy in the opening, you also get this really gorgeous lavender. It's not the same lavender you get in the original where it's really heady and musky and sharp, but it is there, it's prominent. The aldehydes are also a note in this fragrance I do pick up on heavily, especially in the opening, and I do think it does add to the freshness and the clean aspect of the fragrance, but it's not too, too overwhelming in the way I was really, really worried it would be. This is just a nice, easy reach, everyday, 
clean powdery fragrance really pretty for work i feel like this would be an amazing work scent honestly but in my opinion it's not something i would ever pay full price for and i'm just gonna be honest and say that and that one has top notes of aldehydes bergamot mandarin orange middle notes of lavender blue lavender orange blossom and base notes of vanilla and amber and i love 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 the fact that the fragrance on the dry down does have a nice amount of vanilla so it's not too too soapy to where it's not wearable as a perfume but again not quite enough vanilla for me to justify that big price point without a deal next up is bianco latte from giardini di toscana i'm trying my best i know i butchered it in the last video but I am trying. This is a really beautiful musky vanilla and where this really gets me is that projection, longevity, and the sillage. This will be smelled by everybody and it will last on your skin all freaking day which is just so amazing. I know a lot of times these musky vanilla scents do not last or they're very intimate or moderate in the projection but the great thing about this one is it's very intense, very strong creamy sweet vanilla it's just so gorgeous and it almost smells a little bit like toffee to my nose i love it and you really get the coumarin i think that's the note for a lot of people that's either gonna make or break the fragrance so i would recommend not blind buying maybe just trying to get a sample and kind of see how that note plays on your skin i love the note Oh, so good. Top notes of caramel, middle notes of coumarin and honey, and base notes of vanilla and white musk. Then my bond number nine experience, as you guys know, was absolutely lovely. Tribeca is the fragrance I have been using the most. This one does remind me of Baccarat Rouge 540, but just more cozy and sweet comforting definitely more of like a nutty sister to baccarat rouge you do get the same airiness the same expensive quality and experience but they're definitely different i love this one i think for me with the addition of the hazelnut the cacao i do enjoy this one i would say a little bit more just because I love gourmands, and to me, this one doesn't have the same kind of like medicinal touch that Baccarat Rouge does have. This one is just so gorgeous. In some aspects, yes, I do feel like it's similar, but it does stand on its own, and I just, I can't get enough of the fragrance. I think it's so, so beautiful. And even though it is super sweet, it does maintain a level of lightness and airiness that you do also get in that Baccarat Rouge. So top notes of hazelnut, cacao, middle notes of jasmine sandback and cedar, and base notes of ambroxan, caramel, and moss. So yeah, very similar notes to Baccarat, but obviously its own fragrance and it's gorgeous. That one I'm using a lot more recently because it is more warm, cozy, and gourmand, whereas Greenwich Village, even though I think this one is absolutely phenomenal, it is more, in my opinion, of a signature set I would wear and gravitate towards in the springtime. This is really beautiful and fresh almost a little aquatic it's musky fruity citrusy you're getting that i think it's mandarin orange and also the lychee the ambroxan is very strong and apparent in this fragrance it gives it this really beautiful airy quality which i love i love so much and that's the only reason people i feel like are saying it's similar to baccarat rouge is just that airy feel in the opening with a bit of sweetness coming from the praline so so pretty you guys as it dries down you do get more of the sweetness but you're also getting that lovely water lily note which is everything to me with this fragrance i love it it almost makes it a tad aquatic and i just think for the springtime this is going to be a beautiful signature scent for me and maybe for you top notes of lychee cassis and mandarin orange middle notes of water lily peony and jasmine and base notes of ambroxan praline vanilla musk and oak moss for the oudgasm collection my opinions are still very similar to what i've already shared with you guys i feel like oudgasm cafe oud is a really gorgeous niche smelling fragrance this is dry ground coffee rose geranium and 
Oud. It's really great, but I feel like definitely try it before you buy it. It's very strong, very in your face, and I do love that about the fragrance. The Oud is very, very present, but I think mixed in with everything else. It smells, again, very rich, very expensive. It's not going to be like an everyday scent for me, more for like special occasion. Then Vanilla Oud. I think this one is so beautiful. It is musky, it's powdery, it's sweet, it's woody. One of my favorite notes is definitely cashmere wood and that is present in this fragrance and to me when I put this all over my sweater I just feel so cozy, so warm, and so just like comforted. This is so gorgeous and it's a step up from being just your traditional cozy warm scent because it does have a note of saffron that is always going to elevate a fragrance and smell more expensive. And then of course there is that touch of oud sprinkled in that does elevate it even more. Absolutely beautiful. The one thing I'll mention that's a little different than I've mentioned in the past is I did go ahead and smell it on a sweater I wore like two days before. Could still smell the fragrance on the sweater so it is pretty long lasting. It's just not the strongest in projection. But I did pick up on more of like a smoky balsamic quality that I did not pick up on before. So it's a little smoky. Just make sure that you do sample it if you can before you buy it because while it's so beautiful, it is a little smoky. Then Rose Oud, I still feel the exact same way. I think it opens up super fresh and super spicy. You do get the lemon on the dry down. You're getting the rose, the peony, which is actually my favorite floral or at least one of them. I just think it's such a feminine no and it's so pretty. The geranium on the dry down, you do get the oud, but it's still not overwhelming. It's still not intimidating for me personally, but you do get it in the fragrance as well as the cashmere wood. And for me, it's not as cozy and, you know, comforting, of course, as it is in the vanilla oud. But this one also does have vanilla, but I don't pick up on that too much. And I got these from the Sephora sale very recently, so I'll briefly talk about both. Replica by the Fireplace smells absolutely incredible. When I smelled it, the first word that came to my mind was wow. And the second one was fireplace. This truly does transform transport me to buy the fireplace like absolutely they do such a good job I love coffee break but this is a little sexy because it is smoky vanilla nutty and a little spicy this is really great you get the chestnut you're getting the vanilla I think there's pink pepper it is just so gorgeous and I love it I really do I think it's so beautiful Mm, I have to put this one on too. I don't want to mix like weird things together, but this is like so gorgeous. I won't say this is going to be my everyday fragrance, but I do think it's a perfect fall essential. Absolutely cozy and just beautiful and warm and a little sexy and just so, so amazing. And this has top notes of cloves, pink pepper, and orange blossom, middle notes of chestnut, guyac wood, and juniper, and base notes of vanilla, parabolsum, and cashmere. And even though it has all those very, very strong notes, I just think the cashmere truly makes it so, so, so smooth and so equally balanced. And the last fragrance I have to share with you is Vanilla Woods from The Seven Virtues. This fragrance, don't get me wrong, I really like it, but I was thinking it would smell a lot more actually like woodsy. For me, this is a beautiful pear vanilla amber fragrance, which is beautiful. It's warm, it's sweet. The amber does come off really beautiful and kind of like resinous, I guess, but in my opinion, I just thought it would be a little different than what it was. I still really like this. I think it's cozy. I think it's warm. I think it is very tasty and quite beautiful, but I was just assuming it would have more of that woody quality. A little bit I do get, but like I said, more than anything, it's a gorgeous amber vanilla pear scent. It's pretty, 
but I do want to try it a little bit longer before I do give my full opinions. If you've tried this, comment down below. What are your thoughts? What do you think about it? But yeah, those were my thoughts on my perfumes added to my collection in October. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the good things. It lets me know you like the content and helps me creating more similar. I love you and I will see you in the next one, besties. Bye!